your children. They're cute, they say funny things. Then, before you know it, they're all grown up and ready to fly the nest, starting a life of their own. Well, that's how it's supposed to work. Stop acting like a spoiled brat! Well, I am a spoiled brat! In these recession-riddled times, it's harder than ever for young people to get a job. So what chance do these reprobates have of standing on their own two feet? Mom! This lot are selfish. You give me money, so I don't have to work. That is my reality. Sponging. Give me a change. Lazy. You don't earn that yet, have you? Jack, I've just earned it. And completely useless. I don't know how to use the washing machine, the microwave, the dryer. If I can lick my elbow. Their parents are sick and tired of waiting for them to grow up and move out. But they have only got themselves to blame. Race has been one of my biggest mistakes in life. I'm ashamed of myself, really. And I've kind of reached a point where I can't do it anymore. So they're finally kicking them out and forcing them to run their own home. Not one bit of food in the house. No, we've got our sheets, pillows, oh my God. everything. I know this isn't prison, but they're doing better off in there than we are here. They're going to be made to get jobs like the rest of us. When you finish socialising, you want to do some work. Okay. Let me know when it's convenient for you, you know what I mean? I've never seen such a negative group, it's just such a negative attitude. Okay. No, no, because I'm meant to be head chef. <laughs> it kind of makes you despair for humanity sometimes, seeing people like this. It's all under the watchful gaze of their own parents, who will judge their progress. I just fall there and like spoil brats, every one of them. And each week, the most useless gets the boot. <laughs> At stake, the prize of a round-the-world trip. <laughs> Will a month of independent living finally make them grow up? We can't live with animals. This I is who we are! <laughs> For a smack in the face. I ate that. <laughs> I didn't realise how hard it was going to be for me. Or will they remain young, dumb, and living off mum? Oh, Our young dumbers are two weeks into their journey of self discovery. Why do we have to live with people who act like this? Such a pair of dickheads. <laughs> And they've discovered that they are definitely absolute little brats. You can't live with animals. This I is who we are! Last week, the house divided into two camps. Camp Tom and Jack, no pun intended. This is true bromance right here. And camp the rest of the house. You can't be asked being around them two fucking knobheads. Well, don't talk to anyone, you don't talk to any of our stuff. They're not talking to us and we're not talking to them. We've completely fell out, there's no making up to be done. But not making up quickly turned into making out, and the team joined forces to run a pop-up restaurant from their home. Have any of you got any kitchen experience? Toast. You two cooked? I, I had a microwave burger. But the team only managed to cook up a disaster. We have a huge problem. We've got like six people that ain't got seats. What are those big lumps in it? <gasps> do you know what? That's the paper out of the tub. I'm losing my bloody <laughs> temper! What are we going to do? and they fail to make their boss or themselves any money. You've lost me £150. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you lot find it funny, cos I don't. It's up to their parents to decide each week who goes home based on their behaviour and attitude. Oh, is anyone sorry? <laughs> this is raw. Just really quite shocked about the way she was behaving. I'd have went absolutely mental if Jack done that. See you guys! Love you! Jade was the third person to be sent packing for making no effort to improve her behaviour. So now there are five, and they're competing to win a round-the-world trip and finally gain some independence from their parents. There's 18-year-old Hellraiser Ruby Jo, who treats her mother like a skivvy. Mom! 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 Will you zip my dress up, please? If she didn't give me what I wanted from when I was younger, then I wouldn't be like this now, so it's her own fault. 19-year-old Lazybones Tom won't lift a finger for anyone. I can't be expected to run around after other people. They should be the ones running around after me. Ryan, who's 18, has yet to join us in the real world. If I were the king, I'd make sure that everybody is proper good-looking and can afford, like, like spray tans. 19-year-old ladies' man Jack thinks everyone should be at his beck and call. I deserve to be spoiled, but not to have to say, well, it's because I'm awesome. I know. 
meant for higher things, so people should treat me as Roy. And 20-year-old daddy's girl Gracie gets what she wants at any cost. This will probably put my dad in debt for the next 10 years, but I just want this car. <laughs> I don't really care what it costs. Ah! Until now, the group have failed to impress in any of the work placements set by their parents. Oh no, oh no, I broke the nail! The girls don't want to get their hands dirty. This one hates Valentine! <laughs> and the boys have been messing around. They don't take the job seriously, they're giving a bad impression of my company. <laughs> this week, their parents send them to work with creatures with similar manners, hygiene, and social skills. Sleep with her. Good get off boy. Of her. But will becoming a dog's body in a dog's shelter make them any more responsible? Sorry, can you just try and keep Yeah, I didn't mean to. I was just, I actually didn't mean to. I think you should maybe take it a little bit more seriously. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> It's the start of a new week, but some things never change. <laughs> Last night, the group decided to empty the contents of their bean bags all over the floor. <laughs> In the cold light of day, maybe not such a good idea. But for Ruby Job, who's come close to being booted out before, it's an opportunity to show the parents she's starting to grow up. I've been in the bottom now twice in a row, so clearly I've got to step my game up. So after a quick bite to eat, Ruby Joe leads the cleaning up of the house. The only problem is they don't have a vacuum cleaner. I'm going to go to the neighbours and uh, go and get a hoover off them. OK. Let's hope it's a big one. Hello. Hi. Hi. We're, from number... we're just from number 30 over there. Oh, we're, just, yeah. we're just wondering if we'll be able to borrow a hoover. And we'll bring it back. Of course. We'll look at it. Yeah. Is that OK? Hold on a sec. I'll just go get it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll bring it straight back for you. It seems to work pretty well, so... OK. Luck. Great, so now all they need to do is clean up and then return the vacuum cleaner to the kind, elderly, trusting neighbour. Bag full or clog? <gasps> You've broken his hoover. Go and ask another neighbour if they've got a better hoover. <laughs> Excuse me. I was just wondering, have you got a hoover could borrow? Because our hoover's just broke. We'll look after it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Be back soon. <laughs> just because they live in medieval houses doesn't mean they need medieval hoovers. He's got a bag and the bag's full. That's the Hoover bag. Think how big the bean bags was. After identifying the problem with her knowledge of physics, Ruby Jo puts her brilliant mind to work. Why don't we just take the bag out and Hoover up without the bag? It would just come straight back out again. That's the most stupid thing right. you've ever said. But Ruby Jo isn't the only Einstein in the room. Why don't we all get hair dryers? Hair dryers? Yeah, as long as it's out of sight. It's out of mind. While most of the group get back to cleaning, forward slash moving the mess to a different part of the lounge, Jack and Tom get back to relaxing. Thinking back now, the beanbag was probably a bad idea. Job done, and Ruby Jo returns what she's borrowed. Did it do the trick? Uh, yeah, it did, thanks. Is it still working? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> It is, but not as effective as hair dryers, apparently. So the beanbag problem was just the tip of the iceberg. The rest of the house is also a mess. And Ruby Jo, keen to clean up her act and the house, gets stuck in. While best buds Jack and Tom, exhausted from relaxing downstairs, give themselves a break and relax upstairs. Once the house is tidy, then we can just chill and we don't have to worry about it. Just wish people would help a bit more. People could even just make yourself look good, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think they are just trying to make themselves look good, some of them. I'm just a bit pissed off because Jack and Tom said they cleaned the bathroom and I've just had to pick shit all up off the floor and I really don't know what they've cleaned. <laughs> you were born this way, baby. Back home in Stockport, 18-year-old super brat Ruby Jo leaves a constant trail of muck in her wake. It takes about three hours to find one shoe because the other one will be miles away somewhere. Single mum Jo waits hand and foot on her daughter, answering to her every demand. Oh! Yeah. Where's the toilet roll? 
Oh, come on. I do feel a lot of the time like I'm a slave for Ruby Jo. She doesn't wash her own clothes. She doesn't wash any pots. She doesn't even flush the toilet a lot of the time. Can you remember to flush the toilet, please? <laughs> I'm sick of asking you. It doesn't really take much to, for my mum to flush the toilet, does it? Like, she has to do a big chore, like, washing all my clothes. Tom and Jack, it seems, aren't toilet trained either, which is giving Ruby Jo a glimpse of what life must be like for her long-suffering mum. Well, look at that. And it's their lazy attitude that's really pushing Ruby Jo over the edge. 13 days we've been here, right? And um, to be honest, I've not ever once seen her get off the arse and help when they've seen us all cleaning. I haven't. I actually can't think of one time that I've seen them clean. I really can't. So Ruby Jo, who's never one to shy away from confrontation, decides to let the boys know how she feels. Jack, you didn't even get up once when we was cleaning them up. Mm. So you're not being part of it? No. Right, so you two just from now on just gonna sit there and watch everyone else clean up? I, I still, I clean up for myself if I make any mess yeah. and stuff. Yeah, but we all use the bathroom and you don't bother to clean the bathroom or offer to clean the bathroom. I cleaned up my drink towels. I, I put the towels in the radiator. I cleaned up someone who pissed all over the toilet seat. I yeah. sit down where I piss. Yeah, I've been I actually do that clear for day I've one. Been down as well. I always sit down. Yeah, I love bother sitting on it. It's fucking disgusting. And you know what? I'm not like living like a tramp in a monkey toilet. So. It's like you're just avoiding the fact that you haven't done anything. So, that went down well. As well as struggling to clean for themselves, our domestically challenged group are struggling to feed themselves. They've been surviving on budget options of tempeh noodles, crisps, tin tomatoes, and eating them out of dog bowls. I'm eating tomatoes for the second day in a row. That's the only thing we've got in the house at all. Whilst all of them complain about not eating properly, it's Jack's diet that sounds most unsavoury. We're just eating crap. Crap? It's not enough to take me and eat whatsoever, it's pure shit. Surely that's bad for you. The group get a budget of about £7 a day, which is the equivalent to Job Seeker's allowance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it feels nice just to see that purple head again. Yeah. Having lived on e-numbers and alcohol for two weeks, the group plan a healthy shop now their money has arrived. Right, I've got bread, eggs, two pork tenderloins, potatoes, milk, crisp, cheese, butter, tea bags, sausages, chicken, bacon. But you can give them to the birds and bees. But the lure of someone else cooking them cheap fried food is too strong for the weak-willed young dumbers to resist. Starving, can't wait to eat, have a proper meal inside us, be nice. Now we've got a budget, we're treating ourselves, so... Can I please have, um, two eggs? Only five minutes after receiving their budget, disaster strikes. Oh, my God, we're going to drink it on the Ruby, where's my money? Oh my god, oh my god, where's my money? I've lost my money. Check your back pocket. I've got, got my change. Did you have it in the shop? Yeah. Yeah, because I pulled it out and then give you the change out of the girls try and retrace their steps to find Gracie's lost money. I promise you, I did not want a 100% without me. You didn't happen to find any money on the floor, did you, in here? No. If there was anything like that, they'll put it in until and tell me. <coughs> oh, right, no problem. Thank you. Careful. <laughs> I don't want nothing to be careful with anymore. I lost it all. Oh, I'm really fucking pissed off. <laughs> Slow and funny. Oh, what am I supposed to do for four days with nothing? Man, I feel like money. <laughs> Spoilt 20 year old Gracie is not used to worrying about money. I like the spoil. I love every second of getting spoiled. Gracie does get away with Gracie one. Nails, hair, makeup, clothes, food, going out. Quite a lot of money, probably about two, three hundred pounds a week. And, I feel like money. And, I feel like and it's Gracie's poor parents who have to foot the bill. Is that it? Grace is a, a budget freezer. I can get anything I want at any time. 
I just have to ask. She doesn't know the reality of life. The reality well, of the reality life is, is you go out to work, you earn give, money, no, and you no, buy a house no, and you the buy things. Is you give me money, so I don't have to work. That is my reality. Your reality is different. Maureen and I go without because of what we give her. Can I have another score, please? Just another score. She has no appreciation of the value of money because she hasn't had to actually physically do it herself. I'm very proud of the fact that I've pulled off being nearly 21 and still get everything off my mum and dad. Being away from home, this is the first time Gracie and the group have had to live on a tight budget. <sighs> and now that she's lost her dosh, she does the responsible thing and sulks. I'd rather go home because I'm not living with no money for the next four days. Home, what home, Grace? Home, home, my home. And that's it? Yeah. Why do I go home? Because I'm pissed off. Oh, I can't have it now. I lost my money. Sorry, I did say to him I lost my money. Money's really important because I can't eat. What am I supposed to do? I can't eat, I can't get anything to drink, I can't do anything. So I need to go, I need to go home, because I'm not living with no money. Because it could have happened to anyone who wants Yeah. And I'd be upset if no one would share No, I agree. I think she just thinks it was only me asking. I think she needs you to ask to sell as well. I mean, obviously we can hear about that. We're not going to be able to get it back the full 30 quid, are we? 30 pounds to me at home is nothing. It's nothing at all. It's just nothing. And now going from having everything I want to having absolutely nothing, I can't do it. Normally, this selfish bunch only ever think of themselves, but in a rare act of kindness, they decide to club together so that Gracie can at least have something to eat. Really we'll pay for you to have something to eat in the hour, then. We will put in, like, a pound. That's, I'm not sure how much it is, I think about four or five pounds. It's going to be enough for you to have something to eat. Probably, it's because you haven't eaten as well. If you have something to eat, you might feel better afterwards. And we've got to buy citrus anyway, so... No, but not even a big sausage is enough to lift Gracie out of her mood. Even though Gracie's stomach is now full courtesy of the group, her wallet is still empty and she's thinking about giving up and going home. Something that's bringing the mood down in the house. You think she'd be grateful mm. the food there? Yeah, you think so. The mood's, the mood's pretty low though. I'm, close, I'm reaching for the razor blades right now. <laughs> she's saying right now she wants to go home because she's not used to having no money and she just wants to go back home and leech off her parents. And the whole point of being here is that we're, going to, we're meant to be learning to cope without our parents. So if you say you want to go back just so you can have money from your parents, then sort of defeating the point of the object. If Gracie does decide to stay, she's going to have to buck her ideas up. Tomorrow is the work placement, and the parents will be judging their performance along with their behaviour in the house. What to do, what to do, what to do. With less money and no parents to sponge off, Ruby Joe and Ryan come up with a brainwave. I like to go and sit on the high street looking like tramps. See how much money we can make. Chase and status. Mascara and fresh dirt from the street provide them with the perfect cunning disguise as beggars. And they find the very thing that will help their plight. They're going to sit on things and in a wheelchair with a blanket in hope that they'll get some money. I'm not being funny. I'd rather be out trying to make money than sat on my ass in there all day. Yeah. Ryan, right, I'm going to close. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Woo, bloody road. But life on the streets is tough when you're a terrible wheelchair driver. <laughs> <laughs> also out and about are Jack and Tom, and they're having their doubts about Ryan and Ruby Joe's plan. I'm not doing it, it's embarrassing. Yeah, it is, it's stupid. They might be getting money, but... Are you being? I'm not going to act like a knob just for money. I'd actually rather have no money than do that. No, same. Ryan, why do I want this? Because I've got nowhere to put him. I'm trying to get you up the curb. Just because you were stupid, just go get yourself to save. Ryan, I'm not pretending to be disabled, I'm pretending. Yeah, but if anyone asks just you Just somewhere that. to sit. No, that's like discriminating against disabled people. It's just a bit embarrassing. A bit. And insulting to homeless people. And dirty people. And uh, <laughs> it's insulting to just about everyone, really, mm. isn't it? 
We've got to look sad. I wonder how tramps sit for all day and just like look, look bored. Look already. bored. I'm bored already. We're going to have to start asking people. I forgot what homeless people say. Any spare change? Can you spare any change? Any spare change? Ask this woman, Ryan. Spare any change? Not one person's given us a penny. Any spare change? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. At least we're trying to earn a bit of money. Having spent 30 minutes on the street, all they've got to show for their hard work is 10p. Oh, and a condom which they brought along so the bowl wouldn't look empty. Very strong idea. I think uh, I understand what being homeless is like now. It's cold, it's boring. Shall we go home soon? I don't think being homeless is for me, to be honest. We've got condoms. <laughs> <laughs> And you can beave into it and blow it up. Beave into it. Beave into it. Beave into it and blow it up. <laughs> oh, my eyes! Oh, it's more from being homeless than what I thought. So, Ruby, Joe and Ryan have learnt that being homeless isn't all it's cracked up to be. Maybe tomorrow they'll have more fun when they're set to work, along with the rest of the group, for the fourth time. So far, they've run a busy youth hostel. Oh my god! Worked through the early hours of the morning in a fish market. <laughs> and tried to run a pop up restaurant from their homes. <laughs> what is Looks it? Delicious. This week, Ruby Joe's mum will be setting the challenge. She's been working in the healthcare industry for three years, and she's keen for the kids to take responsibility for something other than themselves. I've worked hard all my life from leaving school. It told me that without getting out of bed in the morning and going to work, you, you don't have any money. And if you want to go out spending money, you've got to work. Hello? Hi, it's Jo here. Hi, Mum! Hi, OK? How yeah, are you? Yes, thank you. As parents, we spent years trying to train you all with no success. So let's see how you all fare in looking after the man's best friend and taking responsibility for something other than yourselves. So your next work placement will be at one of the best dog shelters in the UK. And you will be expected to clean up dog poo, exercise the dogs and make sure they are presentable for potential owners and give a short speech on why he or she would make a great pet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby Joe's mum has decided to set them to work at a dog shelter. You need to take it very seriously. It's time the kids learnt what it's like living with something that only ever eats, sleeps and <laughs> Which of our young dumbers will finally show signs of improvement and which will the parents have to put down? Alright then, well good luck to you. Alright, love you. Bye. Bye. I prefer cats to dogs. I love I dogs. I love dogs. But only small dogs. Like a chihuahua. While Gracie is still upset about losing most of her allowance this morning, she's at least trying to get into the spirit of things. I love dogs. <laughs> dogs are awesome. But Jack and Tom are taking great delight in kicking Gracie when she's down. I can't wait. <laughs> Shut up! Stop being a prick! Being a fucking knob, Tom! You're a pair of dickheads. Just being stupid. I take the piss out of everyone. Wouldn't it be funny if I'd take a piss out of you, would it? I wouldn't actually mind. Oh, whatever, I'll crack on then. Is this because you lost your money? No, it's because you keep taking the piss. You can see that obviously I'm upset or whatever, and you have to carry on sitting there taking the piss. It's just stupid, immature. If I were a dog, I'd be a long-haired chihuahua. <laughs> and, I, and I'd be called either Bambi or Trixie, and I'd have a pink collar, and I'd wear tutus. Gracie, if you were a dog, what dog would you be? I'll just choose not to be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> With the others not taking her seriously, Gracie needs some time alone. I want to go home. I want to go home. It's 
be fair, I think she's a bit ungrateful because yeah. we did buy her breakfast yeah. and stuff. Yeah, we paid for breakfast. They're so great. <laughs> and I just want to remember my dad. <laughs> It's just making an atmosphere, and there's, I don't really think we're going to get me down now. There's only five of us now, and I really want us all to get on. Mm. <clears throat> there's only five of us. We're just going to have a laugh, really. Yeah. Oh, I'm going oh. home. I'm not going I home. am going home. I'm sick of them two knobheads. Sick of this since they're shit. Anytime anyone's upset or whatever, they've got to take the fucking piss. Feel so angry. And under normal circumstances, I wouldn't fucking sit here and cry. Do you know what I mean? I just, oh, it just pisses me off so much. The fact that I can't do anything in it really gets on my nerves. It pisses me off as well. I could be at home with my mum cooking me dinner and having all the money I want, and I've got to sit here and listen to them fucking idiots. Grace's emotional ups and downs seem to have taken their toll, but she'll have to try and control them if she's going to succeed in this week's work placement. Wanting to lift everyone's spirits and hopefully convince Gracie to stay, Ruby Joe suggests heading out to paint the town red. But not before they paint their bodies orange. That's really dark. Wow. Look at the difference. <laughs> That's like Beyonce colour, the Anna colour. Yeah, my report. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, the other pad go that colour. Yeah, it looks like you're black on the bottom. And white on the top. I feel gorgeous. <laughs> Check <laughs> these. Well, there's pulling. feet tan and there's looking like that. They're planning there? on pulling tonight. How are they ever going to get lucky dressed like that? Despite their 6 a.m. alarm call and lack of cash, the group want to party, and Ryan makes sure they're prepared just in case they get lucky. One for Gracie, one for Ruby, one for Jack, and one for Tom. Oi, Jack. Like... Ryan shows Jack really? his box of like tricks. That, like that, that. Okay. Like that. And just proper gay for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's cool. But how would you dance if I was a gay guy? No, you don't dance like that. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, you've got to like, dance up against him like that. It's really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that go go. Okay, go. okay, that's cool. Watch out, East London. This bunch of orange watsits are on the prowl, and who could resist such exotic tans? Ruby, you are hot. Despite failing to get any action, the group are in a much better mood after dancing the night away. I haven't been clubbing in about two weeks, so it was amazing hearing music again. I want your drama. But they might not feel so good when they have to get up for work. Two and a half hours sleep probably isn't enough. Right? Know. The whole thing is just going to be shit. That's the spirit, Tom. Shit. Gracie is the first one up at 5 a.m. It's the start of a very long day, and the parents will be watching everything they do, deciding who has made the least effort. Meow. After only two and a half hours sleep, our groggy group embark upon a journey to a dog shelter in Oxfordshire. Luke Nor Blue Cross Dog Shelter is home to 270 abandoned dogs a year. Without the care and support of this charity, many of them will be put down. Today, each of our young dumbers will be given a pooch to look after. At least they'll have lots in common, like not being house trained and smelling badly. Luckily for our four-legged friends, some of the group are dog fans. Air of the dog, that is. I love dogs. They're not one of my favourite animals. My favourite animals are cats, koalas, penguins and slow and worry sitters. Yeah, I love dogs. I like dogs better than humans. But others are less enthusiastic about the day ahead. I've had about an hour and a half sleep today. I'm hanging up my ass. I'm so tired. Worst nightmare when it comes to dogs, cleaning up their shit. Oh. First things first, and our group are briefed by animal welfare assistants Emily and Jess, who are the same age as our clueless bunch, but between them have been working at the shelter for the last four years. Hello. Hi, 
Hi. Today, you'll be exercising, cleaning kennels. You'll be showing them off to potential adopters, trying to find these animals their new home. So if you want to get yourself into two groups... Girls and Ryan. <laughs> That's fine. Are you ready to meet your dogs? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Good. Right, Ruby Joe, this is your dog, Ferdy. Fine. The first one I've seen him, I was a bit like, oh, he's a bit of a small dog. Oh, he's actually really, really cute. Gracie, this is Freddy. <laughs> Hi, Freddy. First impression of my dog was that it hated me. Look at your face. It likes Ryan! It likes me. <laughs> Ryan, this is Martha. Hi. I am so happy with mine. She's the most... Oh, she's gorgeous. This is Susie. Right. They just don't like dogs. They jump up, they slobber, they're generally horrible. They shit everywhere. You've got to clean it up. That, this is Lupin. Who? Lupin. L-U-P-I-N. I've been given the cute little cheeky one. I suppose I'm cute and I'm cheeky and I'm little. So, me and him are kind of similar, I guess. So, now they've met the dogs they'll be looking after, our group will be expected to carry out work in two stages. First, they'll have to clean, care for and exercise their dogs. Then they'll present them to a group of people considering adopting a new pet. For some of the kids, it's a daunting start to the day. I'm scared of dogs. I do not like dogs. I really, really don't like dogs. And whilst Ruby Jo has been worried about the impression she's giving the parents... I need to do well today because I'm not, I don't want to be in the bottom three again. Gracie has other incentives on her mind. Do my parents, if I made enough effort, stay for over 14 days and didn't walk and didn't get eliminated then when I got home win or lose I got a chihuahua so I made it 14th day today so yeah hopefully by the time I get home I'll have a chihuahua waiting for me the group have been split into two Ruby Joe Ryan and Gracie will be mucking out the kennels whilst Tom and Jack start their shift walking their dogs Susie and Lupin <laughs> It smells really bad. Oh, it's Once again, Ruby and I got the rubbish job of cleaning shit. So, yeah, really, really happy. What are the other two doing? Walking the dogs. Oh, oh yeah, while well, we're cleaning the shit. Walking the dog. Guess the walking bird dog. What could possibly go wrong? Sleep with her. Good yeah, boy. Of her. She's a lesbian. <laughs> if she does that, she wants she to does yeah. I would just take them away from each other so it doesn't get too much. As usual, Tom and Jack blissfully ignore everything they're told. Lupin's been jumping on Susie's head a lot and I think the boys sometimes think it's quite funny that he's, he's jumping on her but they really need to take a step back and think how would I like it if someone was jumping on my head. Jack, if you want to keep walking just because Susie's getting a little bit worried so just walk, just walk, yeah. <laughs> She's a lot more relaxed now, do you think? Yes, Back at the kennels, Ruby, Joe, Gracie and Ryan are shown which areas they'll be cleaning. Gracie, you'll be cleaning this one. Yours has got Here's your gloves. Ryan, you're cleaning this one out down here. This is Martha's kennel. Oh, my God, there's, like, no poo. Ruby, Joe, you'll be cleaning out this kennel here. Thank you. After several hissy fits at home over the last few days, this is an opportunity for Gracie to turn things around and show the parents what she's made of. This poor dog's so stressed that he's had to make this mess overnight, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to tidy it up so it's all nice and fresh for him to come in the morning. I'll get diarrhoea and everyone else gets a clean cage. Ain't even started yet. It's so tidy already. All I've got to do is put the tyre back over here and make the bed. I absolutely love dogs, um, but I don't like cleaning their poo. My daddy normally does that. Oops, you don't have to get it on your hands. She has mentioned that um, she's going to get a chihuahua, but she's not quite happy about doing the dirty work, picking up their poo, doing the cleaning. Uh, you need to do both sides of it to get the good out of it. Just scoop it together. <laughs> Keep going. It's time for Gracie to wake up and smell the poo if she's going to be a responsible chihuahua oh, owner. We're not putting it. Okay. If you just want to walk around here. Back from their walk, and the boys' next task is to give their dogs a basic medical check. 
Okay, so if she is okay, maybe have a little look in her ear. And the only thing Lupin wants to do is check out Susie, thanks to Jack letting go of the lead. For goodness sake! <laughs> Get that dog out! <laughs> Sorry, can you just try and keep yeah, I didn't the limit? I was just, I actually didn't mean to. I it's just because it's go. quite important. If the gates yeah, are yeah, open, yeah. he could yeah, run yeah. into the main road. I, I did actually mean to let him go. Yeah, he got me in trouble. I can't even remember his name up the time. Sometimes I get the impression it's in one ear, out the other, especially when he can't remember Lupin's name, bless him. So far, Tom and Jack have been unprofessional, and once the parents <laughs> see that they weren't best in show, it could be a blow to their chances of staying in the competition. Yeah, that's really cute. He's Jazz, cool. always doing a good job. I think you should maybe take it a little bit more seriously. OK. Because this is what we do every day. Great. The main aim of what we do is to rehome as many dogs as possible. These dogs have had maybe not the best start to life. And, um... <laughs> sorry. sorry. We're not, no, I'm really sorry because we're not being rude. <laughs> She's got the giggles now. <laughs> Back at the kennels, Ruby Jo is showing that she's taking the basic caring needs of her dog very seriously. I've decided my dog's gay. Aww. Which gets Ryan thinking. I wonder if dogs can be gay and lesbian, or if they just sleep with anything. Ruby said that her old dog, which she used to have, was gay, because it used to, like, bum other boy dogs. No, it didn't do that. You it said it was up. gay. It liked dressing up. Girls' clothes and it, it, yeah, it did fun. <laughs> That's not always um, sort of a sexual sign, it could be a sign of frustration. So, dogs aren't lesbian, gay, or straight? They're not, no, no. Get your bloody dog off mine. Across the yard, self confessed ladies' man Jack has discovered he shares a similar nature to his dog and has learned a valuable lesson in life. I have got a sex pass dog, I don't know why they gave me the, that dog though. He's just trying to sleep with anything that moves. It's not the right way, really, is that? You got those standards, do you? No, you don't. No. It's a chunk of paper. Ruby, Joe, Ryan, and Gracie are coming to the end of the first part of their work. Is that what? Yeah, that's really good. Oh, feel a bit better about doing it now. Exactly. In the bed. I have the luckiest dog ever. It's got like four layers of bedding. They were, were really smelly at first, but we've cleaned them. Dead good, so. They don't smell anymore. It's the boys' turn to transform their dirty, smelly kennels into something their parents will be proud of. So, Jack, this is Lupin's kennel. So this would be what you're cleaning up today. So there's your scoops. Do I not inspect it first? You can see from here. What do you think it looks like from here? Poo. Do you think it is normal poo? Do you think it's maybe too hard, too soft? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's also it's, yeah, it's, a good it's shape. quite normal. They might also be proud of Tom's ingenious idea. What would be good would be a doggy poo hoover. And what you do is you just go, mm, and then when the poo goes up, it goes, mm, like that. The poo I'm thinking of calling it. That would do the job. So, more messing around from the boys who, if they want to impress the parents, need to pull their socks up. Actually, Jack, you might want to pull your pants up. Okay. So, we're going to go and walk the dogs now. Yay! But before that, there's a small matter that needs attending to. Ryan, Martha um, did this earlier, so if you'd like to pick it up with a poo bag. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is it squishy, Ryan? Yeah, it's squishy. There you go. That's it, turn the bag up. Even though they've spent most of the day mucking around, Jack and Tom are keen to get some feedback from Jess. Would you hire us? Um, yeah, I think um, you could be a little bit more enthusiastic about it. You, you need to put one. more effort okay. into it. That's like that. it. There yeah. we go. Is that lazy Jack? Yeah. And then it's good Jack. That's good Jack. Yeah. That's, you can just see already like how much more of a difference that's made. With the kennels clean and tidied, it's time for Martha's daily walk. But it's not immediately clear who's walking whom. <laughs> Goodbye. While Ruby Jo makes an effort to get to know her dog better. So what breeds my dog? What breeds do you think he is? Do you know anything about? It's got to be Hulk Jack Russell, isn't it? Yeah, he looks a bit like Jack Russell. Yeah. I've had a Jack Russell. Jack isn't even on first name terms with his dog yet. Let's look at it again. Loopy. Is it Loopy? Lupin. Lupin? It says Clupin up there. Clupin. No, oh no, it's a bracket. Uh, 
<laughs> Since losing her money, Gracie's mood swings have been erratic. I don't want to go any further. Just think, you're giving Freddie this time out during the day. Yeah, I know, but I'm giving myself a hernia. She's moaned throughout the day about the most basic of tasks, and now she's only got one thing on her mind. Stop, Grace. Fucking they are. Home, home. And there's no persuading Gracie. I don't know why Gracie's feeling the way she is, to be honest. She was that upset yesterday as well. It all started when she lost the money. Yeah. But then it's just kind of carried on. I want to go home. I don't want to be here. I want to go home. Most of the time, she is fun and bubbly and, you know, happy and all that. Um, but I reckon this is probably what she's like when she doesn't get her own way. Emily, who is the same age as Gracie, has a shot at trying to talk her around. Hey, well, I mean, did you want to come and try with Freddie, try and finish the day off, um, get your mind focused on something, and then obviously you can show him potentially get him a home later on today? It looks like that did the trick. It certainly was quite unprofessional. They're here to learn. They should be taking it under, you know, taking all the information under the belt, doing, working the best that they can, because they're here to learn. And if they're not working as hard as they can, they're not learning and taking in everything that they could be. Gracie's going to have to get over it, as it's nearly time to show their dogs to potential adopters. Oh, no. No. Can Jack and Tom pull it out of the bag after messing around all day? No, no. I'm trying to make him sick. It's really hard work. What am I meant to do when she's doing this? Look, she won't even sit. Surely that's like the most basic thing a dog's meant to do, isn't it? Will Ryan and Ruby Joe do their dogs proud? <laughs> Good boy! He even jumps and sits. And after Gracie's third tantrum in 24 hours, can she put a smile on her face and impress the adopters and the parents watching? Ready. Behave. OK, well done, guys. <coughs> You've done well there. So the next task that we're going to do is we're going to show all the dogs that you've learned everything about today to potential adopters. Let's go then, guys. It's the final part of the kids' work placement, and now they'll have to give a short presentation to potential adopters on everything they've learned about their dogs. The shelter prides itself on being professional and informative about their animals, and if the group do a good enough job, one of their dogs just might find a new home. Tom's first up with Susie. It doesn't really like people, so it's a hard sell. He's struggled to take anything seriously today, so can he up his game for a family audience? This is Susie. She really likes other dogs, but just make sure they're not like puppies or anything, because we've been with another puppy today and it was, I think it was starting to get on her tits a bit, because it was <laughs> jumping up on her every five minutes trying to hump her. Does it get on with other animals or not? If I'm really honest, I would probably say no. Um, I think she's kind of unsure of a lot of, a lot of things. Well, if there's no more questions, then uh, thanks for not throwing stuff at me. <laughs> he mentioned that other dogs may get on Susie's tits. That's not quite the way that we would word it when potential adopters come up. I hope he didn't come across that I haven't really bonded with the dog. I mean, obviously, I struggle with that because I'm not really a dog person. Ruby Jo takes to the stage with her dog, Ferdy. He's three years old and he's a Jack Russell. I spent the day with him today and he's been really good and he's learned new tricks really quickly. Um, I'll show you one of them, what he's learnt today. Ferdy, what's this? Good boy. And he can sit as well, Ferdy. Good boy. So he's a really quick learner and he's a clever dog. I think she did a very good job. She showed both of the tricks that she taught him today. She knew all his background information and she shared that with everyone, so she listened to everything throughout the day. And I hope I get this little fella home now, because I did try. Good boy. It's the turn of Jack and Lupin. Or is it Clupin? It is Lupin, isn't it? And after spending a whole day with his dog, he's as ready as he'll ever be. I mean, what is there to learn about a dog? I mean, I know his breed, I know after his age, I know what he's like. But, I mean, it's not going to be very long, is it? Lupin's only 14 weeks old, so he's quite young. Um, I've spent, like, all day with him, and I've learned that he's, like, really fun and stuff. Um, out of all the dogs, he's probably most, in, like, most acti active, so he's probably more for fun people and stuff, because all day he's just been fun and stuff, so... If you're after like, a really fun dog and stuff, this is the dog. He was sniffing quite a lot, which, we, you know, is it, a bit off-putting for the people watching. Uh, he looks like a crossbreed. Have you any idea what breed he, he is? 
Um, I'm not entirely sure. I just I know he's Japanese brief. I mean, I can I could definitely ask him when I was works here as well to clarify that for you. He was a little bit less informative than the other guys. He could have gone into a little bit more detail about what kind of home he needs in terms of um, experienced owners if, um, because he's going to be a big dog. Next, it's Ryan, and he's feeling apprehensive about his presentation on Martha. I get really shy when I have to talk in front of big groups of people, and I'm just like, mm -hmm, this is my dog. But she's a three-year-old collie, um, and as you can see, she's absolutely gorgeous. Um, she's like so lovable, and everything, like, any family would be lucky to have her. But, um, yeah. Is she obedient? Oh, what's it? Obedient, Ryan. Obedient? Yeah. Does she obey you? Does what you uh, say? Uh, yeah. You know, like your parents. <laughs> sorry, I don't know what that means. Does she do what she tells you to? Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 yes, she does, yeah. Sorry, I didn't tell what you were saying, sorry. We did go through obedience, we went through a lot of that, so really he should have known the answer to that question. Last but not least, it's Gracie and her dog, Freddie. Can she compose herself for the sake of getting him a home? Oh, Freddie. Hello, everybody. Um, this is Freddie. Freddie, say hello. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't very keen on dogs before today. And I've come here and met this little fella, and he is absolutely blowing my mind. He's really, he's really fun and he's energetic, he's very playful and he's just looking for a loving home to look after him and basically just give him the love that he'll give that family back in return. Is he vicious to humans or any other animals? He's not vicious at all, he's really good with kids. He's, he's, he's a proper family dog. Thank you. Come, Freddie. <laughs> I think the dog actually cheered me up, I really do. Like, well, he's such a playful dog, I started just playing about with it and trying to teach it how to sit and whatever. It was just, it was fun. With the presentations over, the audience consider how well the group did. I like the actual collie. Uh, I don't think he explained it very well. Like, yeah, it seemed a bit quicker to get through it. Well, on some of them, it seemed like the dog was more in control. Some of them found it obviously more difficult to present in front of everybody than some of the others. Jess and Emily finish up the day feeding back to the group. OK, guys. So sort of throughout the day, um, some of you done really well, sort of some more than others. Grace, I noticed your attitude this morning was a bit disappointing. I think you let everyone know, unfortunately, that you're quite unhappy. We need to be quite professional here, make sure that we leave sort of baggage at home and, and when we come to work, work's time and, and just get on. Tom and Jack, I think in the afternoon uh, your enthusiasm did kind of waver and I think um, maybe you and Jack mucking around was a bit disrespectful at times and I think if you start to act a bit more seriously, maybe we'll take you a bit more seriously because it can be quite rude. Did any of the dogs get picked? There's a few people that are interested in Lupin and Susie. So even though Tom and Jack messed around all day, they didn't make a total dog's dinner of their presentations. They must be over the moon. I'm still not a dog person. There's not going to be any difference if we go to go back to one. No. no. I can't be bored because I'm going to be tired, so I'm going to go and make tea. It's just we a dog. No, oh, that's a lifelong bond right there. But it's up to the parents to assess how well the kids did overall. Each week, the parents decide which one of their little darlings should be kicked out of the competition. To help make their decision, they'll watch footage of their kids living and working together. Yay! First up, it's a look at how things are going in the house. Oh. Ruby Joe's mum is pleased to see that her daughter is starting to take some responsibility for cleaning. She wouldn't do that at home. But is disappointed to see Jack and Tom not pulling their weight. So you two just from now on just gonna sit there and watch everyone else clean up. I I shut up, I'll shut up for myself to play a bit of yes. Yeah, but we all use the bathroom and you don't bother to clean the bathroom. Yeah. I cleaned up to one who pissed all over the toilet seat. It's fucking disgusting. And you know what? I'm not like living like a tramp in a manky toilet. I think Ruby's done fantastic. I think that's mm. what the boys needed, a bit of kick at the backside. <laughs> <gasps> Ruby, where's my money? The parents have different opinions about Gracie losing her money. Oh, I'm really fucking pissed off. 30 pounds to me at home is nothing. It's nothing at all. It's just nothing. And now 
going from having everything I want to having absolutely nothing. I can't do it. Grace has a history of losing money. She's generally very careless with things. She does tend to throw tantrums. She's, uh, that's probably why she gets money off of us indoors, because we just, I don't personally want to see the tantrums. So. There was part of me that thought Grace is really starting to appreciate the value of money. Normally, I should think for most of them, 20 quid's nothing, but suddenly, yeah, suddenly that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a big deal. We'll pay for you to have something to eat now, then. And we've got to buy essentials anyway, so... They're pleasantly surprised to see the group pull together and offer her help. I was really relieved when they all offered to club together because I was really worried there at one moment. They were all going to sit there and eat their breakfast. And I was just thinking, when I see Tom, I could really slap him in the chops for that. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Stop being a prick. Being a fucking knob, Tom. You're a pair of dickheads. Just being stupid. I take the piss out of everyone. Is this because you lost your money? No, it's because you keep taking the piss. Tom's attitude is something that I've seen before. I genuinely don't think there's any malice with him. I just think that he's, he still needs to grow up at the end of the day. Sick of this there's shit. Any time anyone's upset or whatever, they've got to take the fucking piss. I could be at home with my mum cooking me dinner and having all the money I want and I've got to sit here and listen to them fucking idiots. She was obviously quite upset about it and I don't think that... Uh... She's very happy with the boys because they were cracking jokes and winding her up. Ryan and Ruby both went out to her as well. Yeah. Didn't have a lot to say, but, you know, sometimes Ryan is like that. If he sees somebody upset, he put his arm around her. <laughs> Next, the parents watch how well the group did on this week's work placement. Sleep with her. Good Get off boy. Of her. She's a lesbian. <laughs> And I'm not surprised to see Tom and Jack messing around. <laughs> Sorry, can you just try and keep yeah, I didn't mean to. I was just, I actually didn't mean to. I've just got the giggles now. You and Jack mucking around a little bit um, was a bit disrespectful at times. It seems like when Jack and Tom's together, it's bringing the worst out in them. It just seems like they feel they need to turn things into a slight comedy act. I like Jack to take a bit more responsibility and sort of not act to the goat all the time. Right. Not great. Fucking hard. Home home. I don't know why Grace is feeling the way she is, to be honest. It all started when she lost the money. Yeah. But then it's just kind of carried on. It was quite a shame that she didn't try and put that behind her. I don't think she's very happy. She's not getting a puppy or anything, is she just... Because they, they... A chihuahua. No, a friend got one, and it's <laughs> a lovely little thing. <laughs> After watching the footage, the parents identify three kids who they think have made the least effort, but only one of them will be sent home. I think this has been the hardest week for me today, when I've been in quite a turmoil with the way I'm going to vote. It's really awkward for me to vote this week. I think he let himself down. He didn't take it seriously. He joked about, you know, it was a joke. Don't vote Grace off because she's unhappy. Vote her off for her behaviour, but because she's unhappy and sulking, that, please don't vote her off for that. She said she wanted to leave. That might have just been because she was upset. The group wait for this week's decision back at the house. I don't think it's really obvious who's going this week. No, it's not. It, it could is. be. It's not Greasy. Really oh, I, I guarantee three. I'm in the bottom three. I guarantee I'm in the bottom three. Right. They have no idea which parents will walk through the door to announce the verdict. This week, the parents have decided that Gracie, Jack and Tom haven't been up to scratch and they've put them in the bottom three, but only one of them will be leaving the house for good. Ruby, Joe and Ryan are safe for now and wait for the final decision. Shot. I'm seriously shot. What do you think we are now? I think it's, it's great old Jack. Quite disappointed in this last one. All right. Is you mucking about, Jack? What did I do wrong? What bit was With there? the dogs, mucking about with the dogs. I'm being really cheeky, mine. Do you okay. know what I mean? A bit sarcastic. <laughs> 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 yeah, really I know. We knew what you were doing. You didn't pull the dog away, Jack. <laughs> yeah, but it was really amusing. <laughs> well, it's not really, because you just make yourself look stupid. We can see that you and Jack 
a really good friends yeah. and you do seem to egg each other on and you're being silly i think we were all quite disappointed to see that, that you you went from what you did last week to this week yeah. and, and that's why you've ended up where you are <laughs> okay grace i was a bit disappointed this week with um you throwing money at tantrums you lost the money and i understand you was pissed off with yourself with that but you seem to let it go into the next day where the kennels were, we had a totally bad attitude. You, you've done certain things well in the past, in the last couple of weeks, and I think the wheels fell off this week a bit. It's time to put the young dumbers out of their misery. Grace, you'll be coming home with me tonight. I can't wait to get my phone. I can't wait to see mum. Phone first, mum second. No. While Gracie and dad chat, Tom and Jack's mum drag them out for a one-on-one. -on -one. What I want you to do is just to stop being silly, because at the end of the day, you were almost, it came across that you were mocking. You joke about Jack and it's not funny, not really working. It's showing me up in, in a lot of ways, because right. I've got to sit there and watch that. Please tell me you got me a chihuahua. Well, I lasted more than two weeks. Yeah, I haven't got one. No. What do you mean I haven't got one? I ain't getting you a chihuahua until you start bucking up. You promised! So another one bites the dust. Has Gracie learned anything from her time in the house? Will the other kids find her lost money? And what will she call her new chihuahua if her dad gives in and buys it for her? Who knows? But for the time being, Gracie remains young, dumb, and living off mum. Next week, it's time to bring out the clowns as our gang try to run a children's party. I'm not in the mood to entertain anymore. But when they bring the party home, it's so fucking cold. Things get out of hand. What was I doing? Oh my god! And it looks like the house could be split for good. That fucking alley food will fucking. Your children. They're cute. They say funny things. Then, before you know it, they're all grown up and ready to fly the nest, starting a life of their own. Well, that's how it's supposed to work. In these recession-riddled times, it's harder than ever for young people to get a job. So what chance do these reprobates have of standing on their own two feet? Mom! This lot are selfish. You give me money, so I don't have to work. That is my reality. Sponging. Give me a change. Lazy. You don't earn that yet, have you? Jack, I've just earned it. And completely useless. I don't know how to use the washing machine, the microwave, the dryer. If I can lick my elbow. Their parents are sick and tired of waiting for them to grow up and move out. But they've only got themselves to blame. Grace has been one of my biggest mistakes in life. I'm ashamed of myself, really. And I've kind of reached the point where I can't do it anymore. So they're finally kicking them out and forcing them to run their own home. Not one bit of food in the house. No, we've got to buy sheets, pillows, oh my God. everything. I know this is in prison, but they're doing better off in there than we are here. They're going to be made to get jobs like the rest of us. When you finish socialising, you want to do some work. Let me know when you're, it's convenient for you, you know what I mean? I've never seen such a negative group with just such a negative attitude. Okay. But no, no, because I'm meant to be head chef. Ah! It kind of makes you despair for humanity sometimes, seeing people like this. It's all under the watchful gaze of their own parents, who will judge their progress. I just fall there and like spoil brats, every one of them. And each week, the most useless gets the boot. <laughs> At stake, the prize of a round-the-world trip. <laughs> will a month of independent living finally make them grow up? I can't live with animals. This I is who we are! <laughs> for a smack in the face. I hate that. I didn't realise how hard it was going to be for me. Or will they remain young, dumb and living off mum? I'll f***ing it through them.
young dumbers are two weeks into their journey of self-discovery. Why do we have to live with people who act like this? Such a pair of dickheads. And they've discovered that they are definitely absolute little brats. You can't live with animals. This I is who we are. Last week, the house divided into two camps. Camp Tom and Jack, no pun intended. This is true bromance right here. And camp the rest of the house. You can't be asked being around them two fucking knobheads. Well, don't talk to anyone, we don't talk to any of our stuff. They're not talking to us and we're not talking to them. We've completely fell out, there's no making up to be done. But not making up quickly turned into making out, and the team joined forces to run a pop-up restaurant from their home. Have any of you got any kitchen experience? Toast. You two I, cooked? I had a microwave burger. But the team only managed to cook up a disaster. We have a huge problem. We've got, like, six people that ain't got seats. What are those big lumps in it? <gasps> do you know what? That's the paper out of the tub. I'm losing my bloody temper! <laughs> what are we going to do? and they fail to make their boss or themselves any money. You've lost me £150. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you lot find it funny, cos I don't. It's up to their parents to decide each week who goes home based on their behaviour and attitude. Oh, is anyone sorry? <laughs> this is war. Just really quite shocked about the way she was behaving. I'd have went absolutely mental if Jack done that. See you guys! Love you! Jade was the third person to be sent packing for making no effort to improve her behaviour. So now there are five, and they're competing to win a round-the-world trip and finally gain some independence from their parents. There's 18-year-old Hellraiser Ruby Jo, who treats her mother like a skivvy. Mom! 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 Will you zip my dress up, please? If she didn't give me what I wanted from when I was younger, then I wouldn't be like this now, so it's her own fault. 19-year-old Lazybones Tom won't lift a finger for anyone. I can't be expected to run around after other people. They should be the ones running around after me. Ryan, who's 18, has yet to join us in the real world. If I were the king, I'd make sure that everybody is proper good-looking and can afford, like, like spray tans. 19-year-old ladies' man Jack thinks everyone should be at his beck and call. I deserve to be spoiled but looked after so well. It's because I'm awesome. I know I'm meant for higher things. So people should treat me as Roy. And 20-year-old daddy's girl Gracie gets what she wants at any cost. This will probably put my dad in debt for the next 10 years. But I just want this car. <laughs> I don't really care what it costs. Ah! Until now, the group have failed to impress in any of the work placements set by their parents. Oh no! Oh no, I broke the nail! The girls don't want to get their hands dirty. This one hates my <laughs> and the boys have been messing around. They don't take the job seriously, they're giving a bad impression of my company. <laughs> this week, their parents send them to work with creatures with similar manners, hygiene, and social skills. Sleep with her. Good Get off boy. Of her. But will becoming a dog's body in a dog shelter make them any more responsible? Sorry, can you just try and keep Yeah, I didn't mean to. I was just, I actually didn't mean to. I think you should maybe take it a little bit more seriously. <laughs> and, um. <laughs> <laughs> it's the start of a new week, but some things never change. <laughs> Last night, the group decided to empty the contents of their bean bags all over the floor. <laughs> In the cold light of day, maybe not such a good idea. But for Ruby Joe, who's come close to being booted out before, it's an opportunity to show the parents she's starting to grow up. I've been in the bottom now twice in a row, so clearly I've got to step my game up. So after a quick bite to eat, Ruby Joe leads the cleaning up of the house. The only problem is they don't have a vacuum cleaner. I'm gonna go to the neighbours and uh, go and get a hoover off them. Okay. Let's hope it's a big one. Hello. Hi. Hiya. We're from number... We're just from number 30 over there. Oh, we're just, yeah. We were just wondering if we'd be able to borrow a hoover. And we'll bring it back. Of course. We'll look at it. Yeah. Is that OK? Hold on a sec. I'll just go get it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll bring it straight back for you. It seems to work pretty well, so... OK. Luck. Great. So now all they need to do is clean up and then return the vacuum cleaner to the kind, elderly, trusting neighbour. Bag full or clog. <gasps> You've broken his hoover. Go and ask another neighbour if they've got a better hoover. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, 
scares me. I was just wondering, have you got a Hoover could borrow? Because our Hoover's just broke. We'll look after it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Be back soon. <laughs> Just because they live in medieval houses doesn't mean they need medieval hoovers. He's got a bag and the bag's full. That's the hoover bag. Think how big the bean bag was. After identifying the problem with her knowledge of physics, Ruby Jo puts her brilliant mind to work. Why don't we just take the bag out and hoover up without the bag? It would just come straight back out again. That's the most stupid right. thing you've ever said. But Ruby Jo isn't the only Einstein in the room. Why don't we all get hair dryers? Hair dryers? Yeah, as long as it's out of sight. It's out of mind. Ah. Yay! While most of the group get back to cleaning, forward slash moving the mess to a different part of the lounge, Jack and Tom get back to relaxing. Thinking back now, the beanbag was probably a bad idea. Job done, and Ruby Jo returns what she's borrowed. Did it do the trick? Uh, yeah, it did, thanks. Is it still working? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it is, but not as effective as hair dryers, apparently. So the beanbag problem was just the tip of the iceberg. The rest of the house is also a mess. And Ruby Jo, keen to clean up her act and the house, gets stuck in. While best buds Jack and Tom, exhausted from relaxing downstairs, give themselves a break and relax upstairs. Once the house is tidy, then we can just chill and we don't have to worry about it. Just wish people would help a bit more. People are keen just to make yourself look good, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think they are just trying to make themselves look good, some of them. I'm just a bit pissed off because Jack and Tom said they cleaned the bathroom and I've just had to pick shit all up off the floor and I really don't know what they've cleaned. <laughs> you Back home in Stockport, 18-year-old super brat Ruby Jo leaves a constant trail of muck in her wake. It takes about three hours to find one shoe, because the other one will be miles away somewhere. Single mum Jo waits hand and foot on her daughter, answering to her every demand. Oh! Yeah. Where's the toilet roll? Oh, come on. I do feel a lot of the time like I'm a slave for Ruby Jo. She doesn't wash her own clothes. She doesn't wash any pots. She doesn't even flush the toilet a lot of the time. <laughs> Remember to flush the toilet, please. <laughs> I'm sick of asking you. Don't really take much to, for my mum to flush the toilet, does it? Like, she has to do a big chore, like washing all my clothes. Tom and Jack, it seems, aren't toilet trained either, which is giving Ruby Jo a glimpse of what life must be like for her long suffering mum. Well, look at that. I don't fancy like, sitting on that toilet like it is. It's disgusting. And it's their lazy attitude that's really pushing Ruby Jo over the edge. 13 days we've been here, right? And um, to be honest, I've not I ever once seen them get off their arse and help when they've seen us all cleaning. Seen I haven't. I actually can't think of one time that I've seen them clean. I really can't. So Ruby Jo, who's never one to shy away from confrontation, decides to let the boys know how she feels. Jack, you didn't even get up once when we was cleaning them up. Mm. So you're not being part of it? No. Right, so you two just from now on just gonna sit there and watch everyone else clean up? I, I still I clean up for myself if I make any yeah. mess and stuff. Yeah, but we all use the bathroom and you don't bother to clean the bathroom or offer to clean the bathroom. I cleaned up my dirty towels. I, I put the towels in the radiator. I cleaned up someone who pissed all over the toilet seat. I sit down when I piss. Yeah, I've been sitting I actually down. that clear for day one. Well. I always sit down. Yeah, I don't bother sitting on it. It's fucking disgusting. You know what? I'm not like living like a tramp in a monkey toilet. So. It's like you're just avoiding the fact that you haven't done anything. So, that went down well. As well as struggling to clean for themselves, our domestically challenged group are struggling to feed themselves. They've been surviving on budget options of tempeh noodles, crisps, tin tomatoes, and eating them out of dog bowls. I'm eating tomatoes for the second day in a row. That's the only thing we've got in the house at all. Whilst all of them complain about not eating properly, it's Jack's diet that sounds most unsavoury. We're just eating crap. Crap? It's not enough to take me meat whatsoever, it's pure shit. Surely that's bad for you. The group get a budget of about £7 a day, which is the equivalent to Job Seeker's allowance. Oh, yay! <laughs> 
It feels nice just to see that purple head again. Yeah. Having lived on e-numbers and alcohol for two weeks, the group plan a healthy shop now their money has arrived. Right, I've got bread, eggs, two pork tenderloins, potatoes, milk, crisp, cheese, butter, tea bag, sausages, chicken, bacon. But you can give them to the birds and bees. I see but the lure of someone else cooking them cheap fried food is too strong for the weak-willed young dumbers to resist. Starving, can't wait to eat, have a proper meal inside us, you know. Now we've got a budget, we're treating ourselves, so... Can I please have um, two eggs? Only five minutes after receiving their budget, disaster strikes. Oh my God, what's your money? Where's my money? Ruby, where's my money? Oh my god, oh my god, where's my money? I've lost my money. Check your back pocket. I've got, got my change. Did you have it in the shop? Yeah. Yeah, because I pulled it out and then give you the change out of the The girls try and retrace their steps to find Gracie's lost money. I promise you, I did not want a 100% without me. What? You didn't happen to find any money on the floor, did you, in here? No. If there was anything like that, they'll put it <coughs> into and tell me. Oh, right, but no problem. Thank you. Careful. <laughs> I haven't got nothing to be careful with anymore. I lost it all. Oh, I'm really fucking pissed off. It's not even funny. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Four days with nothing. Man, I feel like money. Spoilt 20-year-old Gracie is not used to worrying about money. I like to spoil. I love every second of getting spoiled. Gracie does get away with Gracie once. Nails, hair, makeup, clothes, food, going out. Quite a lot of money, probably about two, three hundred pounds a week. And it's Gracie's poor parents who have to foot the bill. Is that it? Grace is a, a budget free zone. I can get anything I want at any time. I just have to ask. She doesn't know the reality of life. The reality well, of the reality life is, is you go out to work, you, earn you, money, no, and you no, buy a house no, and you the buy things. Is, you give me money so I don't have to work. That is my reality. Your reality is different. Maureen and I go without because of what we give her. Can I have another score, please? Just another score. She has no appreciation of the value of money because she hasn't had to actually physically do it herself. I'm very proud of the fact that I've pulled off being nearly 21 and still get everything off my mum and dad. Being away from home, this is the first time Gracie and the group have had to live on a tight budget. <laughs> and now that she's lost her dosh, she does the responsible thing and sulks. I'd rather go home because I'm not living with no money for the next four days. Home, what home, Grace? Home, home, my home. In that's it? Yeah. Why do I go home? Because I'm pissed off. Oh, I can't have it now. I lost my money. Sorry, I did say to him I lost my money. Money's really important because I, I can't eat. What am I supposed to do? I can't eat, I can't get anything to drink, I can't do anything. So I need to go, I need to go home because I'm not living with no money. Because it could have happened to any one of us. Yeah. And I'd be upset if no one would share. No, I agree. I think she just thinks it was only me asking. I think she needs you to ask her to sell as well. I mean, obviously, we can hear her out, but we're not going to be able to get it back the full 30 quid, are we? 30 pounds to me at home is nothing. It's nothing at all. It's just nothing. And now going from having everything I want to having absolutely nothing, I can't do it. Normally, this selfish bunch only ever think of themselves, but in a rare act of kindness, they decide to club together so that Gracie can at least have something to eat. Really we'll pay for you to have something to eat now, then. We will put in, like, a pound. That's, I'm not sure how much it is, I think about four or five pounds. It's going to be enough for you to have something to eat. Probably, it's because you haven't eaten as well. If you have something to eat, you might feel better afterwards. And we've got buy citrus anyway, so... But not even a big sausage is enough to lift Gracie out of her mood 